Please, Susan is up to something today. She and Ted are making an insect zoo, setting up the cages they'll need for their animals. For insects are animals, you know. All of them have six jointed legs, and none of them have backbones. That's a katydid. He's a relative of the crickets and the grasshoppers. Like all insects, his body is divided into three parts. A head, a thorax, or middle part, and an abdomen, or stomach. In his abdomen are some small holes called spiracles, through which he breathes. His wings and his six legs all grow out from his thorax. Ted's making him a home in this lamp chimney cage. The katydid will eat those leaves. And every day or two, Susan will sprinkle in a little water for him to drink. Here's the insect cage Ted's built for his pet cricket. Ted's cutting a piece of apple. He'll put it in the cage for the cricket to eat. Crickets are the canaries of the insect world. Like their relatives, the katydids, they sing by rubbing their wings together. Susan wants to look at him under Ted's magnifying glass. Here he is, a black field cricket. He's young, but he's like an adult in almost every way except size. Say, look at that cricket's head. There are his two antennae, or feelers. Just behind them are his big compound eyes, each one made up of many little parts. He has a curious kind of mouth, for his jaws, don't as yours do, they work sideways. Put him in the sun, Ted. But look what Susan's taking out of that box. And look what's on it. Those little objects are the eggs of a butterfly. Since butterflies usually lay their eggs on the leaves their caterpillars eat, we're not surprised to find caterpillars here too. A caterpillar is a growing up stage in the life of a moth or butterfly. The caterpillar hatches from the egg and spends his time eating leaves. After a while, the caterpillar forms a chrysalis. The chrysalis is a resting stage during which the animal changes into a beautiful butterfly. If Susan and Ted are lucky, they may see their eggs hatch into caterpillars. The caterpillars turn into chrysalises and the chrysalises change into butterflies, like this one. By the way, do you know how to tell a butterfly from a moth? Well, the best way is to look closely at the animal's antennae, or feelers. Those of a butterfly have knobs on the ends. Those of a moth are straight, or sometimes fringed. Wonder what Susan's looking for in all that milkweed floss. Careful, Susan, you'll miss it. Oops, you missed the jar that time. But there we are, a milkweed bug. Susan found him on a milkweed bush. He is a true bug, too. Only those insects that can use their mouths for piercing and sucking may properly be called bugs, you know. Since he lives on milkweed, Susan puts him in a jar with some of his friends and plenty of his favorite food. Ted caught some beetles this morning, ladybird beetles. He found them on a plant that was covered with aphids. Aphids, you know, are the little bugs that are a common garden pest. The ladybird beetles eat them, doing man a great service. You can usually recognize members of the beetle family by the two hard shell-like covers that fit over their wings. Susan is carrying Ted's ant house out for the zoo. Ted made it himself, 
a wooden frame, and two pieces of window glass cut to size. Ants, of course, are insects, related to the bees and wasps. Ted's ants have made themselves quite at home here, building tunnels, caring for their eggs and young, and getting food. Of course, Ted and Susan provide the food, a few grass or weed seeds, and even a small insect once in a while. Ted keeps a small sponge in the ant house too moistening it with water so the ants won't go thirsty. But here's the... He eats other insects, and because he's always hungry, he's a real garden friend. Susan keeps him as a pet, and she even feeds him an occasional moth or butterfly. A wonderful pet he makes, too. He's quite tame, for he seems to know that Susan will take good care of him. Those little finger-like affairs around his mouth are palps. They help him eat and also serve as tasters. Susan knows he's thirsty after his meal so she gives him a drink of water from the eyedropper. Watch him take it. And now, while our friend the mantis has his drink, let's take one more look at the animals in the zoo. Here's the katydid, as green as the leaves he's found on, with the six jointed legs all insects have. The cricket, the canary of the insect world. Almost any time during the late summer, you can find him around the house or in the backyard. Like all insects, his body is divided into three parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. A beautiful butterfly. Susan has all four stages in its life. The eggs, which hatch into caterpillars. The caterpillars, which eat and finally rest as chrysalises. And the chrysalis, from which there comes at last the adult butterfly. Here's one of Susan's milkweed bugs. He's a real bug, too, since he has the piercing and sucking mouth that only true bugs possess. Ted's ladybird beetle, eating the aphids, which are its favorite food. Ladybirds are members of the beetle family, the largest of all insect groups. Wouldn't you like to have an ant house yourself? You can build one, you know. Watching the ants as they go about their daily lives is wonderful fun. Finally, here's the prize animal in the whole zoo. The praying mantis. Believe it or not, he's a friendly insect, easily tamed, and he makes an interesting pet. Hunting for insects and finding them is fun. Few of them will harm you, but there are many books to help you learn which ones may not be safe to handle. So learn about insects, and then, like Susan and Ted, you too can have an insect zoo.